Ark is a dangerous place. And if you want to survive, you're going to have to be quick on the draw. But these things don't just fall out of the sky. <laughs> Much, at least. No, if you want to have the best weapons and have the ammo for those weapons, you're going to need this. The Bullet Maker. Learn how to make it today. An architecture. Alright, let's start this off with the standard inventory that you will need to build this boat. You will need a raft, of course, and then you will also need 18 stone foundations, as well as 16 stone window frames. Technically, these can be walls as well, but I have had to shoot through, uh, shoot dinos through windows enough times that I greatly appreciate window frames. You will also want a dinosaur gateway, and I would encourage an S plus reinforced gate, two stone double door frames, as well as reinforced, and I recommend again S plus double doors. Then you will need gear for the boat, uh, looking at two mortar and pestles a blueprint maker, mostly just to be a table, uh, two simple beds, you will want a feeding trough, a smithy, I recommend the S+, plus. you will want eight stone, found, uh, stone ceilings, you will want a stone hatch frame and a rope ladder, six wooden ramps, three refining forges, a wooden hatch frame, four wooden fence foundations, six sloped stone roofs, two left-facing sloped stone walls, two right-facing sloped stone walls, two wall torches, a campfire, and eventually you will need a fabricator in this thing. Let's go ahead and start building. I'm going to start this off by grabbing the fence foundations as well as the pillar the wooden foundations, and I'll grab as many of the uh, stone foundations as I can. My weight ability is pretty decent. You'll probably need to cut back whatever. All right, and don't forget, you'll need a raft. Let's go ahead and grab uh, the fence post, or pardon me, the fence post foundation. And then we're going to want to uh, get that as centered onto the boat as possible. And then I do encourage using the cross beam of the raft to try to give you a reference point to keep that halfway plumb. Okay, once you've got that pretty much centered up and level with the crossbeam, we're going to go ahead and then grab the uh, wood pillar. Alright, and once the wood pillar is down, bust out the foundations. Now, if you want to go carefully, you can use the wood foundations to see if it's in the right position. I've done this enough times that I have a high confidence that it's in the right position already. So we're going to go ahead and go straight to the stone foundations. And we'll do that, and I will get out of the placement range. So I can drop a few of them there. We're going to get start off with the classic 3x3, three 9 three, foundation format to fill out the standard uh, lengths of the uh, raft itself. Alrighty. Once you've got a few of the foundations down, also remember, you're going to want to clean up the mess of the original pieces you dropped. I do encourage trying to keep the foundations, uh, especially the fence post foundation, as you will be using that later in this same build. We'll go ahead and fill out The 9x9 nine nine format. Alright. Once you've got the standard 3x3 three three, uh, format uh, filling up the uh, standard frame of the raft, grab some uh, thatch ceilings and just use that to start extending out the rear of the raft. We're going to keep it uh, three foundations wide. We are going to take it a few extra foundations forward. We're going to put an extra three on the rear and one forward. Two, three. 
And then we repeat history with the uh, ceiling. One. Two. Three. Clean up our mess. Since we're doing this, go ahead and take it up to the front. Well, not there. Repeat history at the front of the raft. One, two, three, and then we drop in foundations. Clean up our mess. And that's your foundation. We'll give you an overhead view. As far as builds go, this one is not complicated. This is a, th you know, basically a 3x6 foundation rectangle. Center line going down the center of the raft. It's a smaller build, but it's going to be compact and filled. Screenshot as you need. Take pictures. Pause. Let's get back All to right, the Alright, so we're coming up onto another order-specific uh, part of building. So... If you pay attention to nothing else this uh, video, pay attention to this. We start by getting the stone gateway. We want to keep that centered up along the boat. So you're going to want to do this by eye a little bit. Just kind of make sure that on the side foundation posts, you're about equal distance with space. And we take that about as far back as we can. Just like that. Once that job is done, then we go ahead and grab our wood foundation, fence foundation posts. And on the rear corners of the raft, uh, the foundations at the corners, we drop them along the line, and then from the snap point that the first one creates, we're going to make use of the 45 degree angle that it creates. And like with any arc build, it takes a minute or two to find the angle, but if you're patient, it comes to you. And then we repeat history. On the other side. Once you've got those fence posts down, go ahead and grab your windows. And might as well go ahead and drop your gates in. Now, generally on a boat, especially on smaller boats, I usually save these to manual, just because if you're walking past them a lot, they can get annoying. That's your own personal preference, that's why I suggest the S+, Plus, so you always have the option. Grab your head, go ahead and grab your window frames. We're going to go ahead and go two windows up. Okay, once you've gotten the uh, rear sections placed, let's go ahead and drop in the doors and then everything else becomes a lot easier then. So, along the rear of the raft is the uh, foundation block that you're going to put the double door frames. Once those are placed, we start to go ham with the windows. Now, this is the time to start getting the ramps onto the boat, because it's going to start getting hard to actually get up there. So we want to go ahead and make sure that those are coming out to the doorways. 
So we'll put one on either side. And since we are dealing with a centered uh, gateway, we just need one right there. That'll be, with it being centered, you'll be able to ride your dinos up into the stone gateway. No problem. Go ahead and get those sloped walls out now. And get them onto the sides accordingly. All right. Go ahead and get the uh, three remaining ramps. Put those onto the uh, nose of the ship. Go ahead and get your stone ceiling. As well as your sloped roofs. And get that hatch frame. You might as well get your rope ladder also. Okay, go ahead and put the uh, forward sl uh, sloped roofs right ahead. They can be slightly irksome, so if you put it on now, the uh, snap points will be more forgiving to you. Okay. And then directly over your walkway, go ahead and drop two stone ceilings. In the center, though, drop your hatch frame and drop a standard rope ladder. And the reason I really like the rope ladder in this equation is because you have the option to retract it. I find that is invaluable. While we're here, grab your doors, the reinforced doors for the uh, double doors. Drop those in exactly where you'd think. All right. Now we're gonna go ahead and grab the wood hat frame and just like in Beastmaster, we are gonna go ahead and put that in over a doorway be kind of an attic storage area. Go ahead and drop that ladder back down, where if you look up at it, with the option, you climb up, it's right there. Temporarily I'm going to remove that roof again. Going to grab my smith, going to grab my uh, Feeding trough then, not my bed, my feeding trough. Okay, now, because of uh, being able to click through windows and such, I encourage putting the smithy to the window side. That way if I'm using the S plus transfer gun to quickly unload my Anki on a metal run, I can just click right through it. And then right next to that is where I drop the feeding trough. And the feeding trough is what I use instead of a preservation bin for myself, as well as obviously I keep the uh, groceries and stuff for the dinos. All right, now just like with everything else in ARC, sometimes you've got to move around a little bit to get the right angle. Don't forget, you can always stand on the smithy. Do it all the time. And I do like to position it as centered as possible. Alright, once you've got that, get the roofs. We are just about done with the actual frame of the ship here. Get a few more ceilings. Drop this up there. Okay, now this rear area I leave open. That way, in case I've got a little bit of clearance or whatnot, plus you'd start having the uh, hitboxes for the pieces run into each other. 
Hey, in all honesty, this area back here is going to be basically the animal storage area for when you're on the move. So I do leave this back row open. If you want more security and put some extra pieces on here, I do believe you have sufficient structures available to do that. But then again, that's personal preference. I've been happy that with this build as is, I'm already getting the fact it's sheltered, completely a sheltered location. Now let's actually start getting some equipment in here to get this set up. Forges, beds, I do like to use the blueprint maker, not so much as a blueprint maker, so much as I like to use it as an actual table. Now there is a mod from Eco that has a great shelf that if you wanted to use it that way, I use it all the time, but I didn't want to include an entire mod just for one piece for this video. Whatever works for you, that's great. Let's start with the lighting here. Wall torches uh, go best at this crossbeam section here right by the door. Pretty centralized in the boat. And then that does pretty good lighting for you at night. If I can get it to snap inside the boat. See, I why? Why do you do this to me? I will never understand why they give you the option to place a wall torch outside of where you're standing. There we are. And then we just mirror it over here. Same cross, plate, cross base place. Excellent. Okay. So, while we're over here, go ahead and get the S Plus Blueprint table, because I like it as a table again. Alright, then we go ahead and grab our mortar and pestles, and we take it off to the side. One... And two. And if you wanted to, you still have access to the blueprint. Excellent. Now, on this side of the wall, we're going to go ahead and grab our pair of beds. And we're just going to go ahead and shove it right into the corner. I have never cared if uh, my dino steps on my bed while I'm not using it. Because all it is is a respawn point. And while we're here then... While we're here then... Drop the second one. I always like to have two, just in case I'm having a really bad day. In the home stretch now, we're going to go ahead and grab three forges. We're going to kind of get these wedged in as about as close as possible. One. Two. Three. All right. Now, in this corner now, we have a functional metal harvest. Now, this, though, is the bullet maker. There's an important piece of equipment that we need to make bullets here. You may actually need to run this boat for a little bit to, gar to actually harvest the metal to get it to that point. And that's your fabricator. So that's why I'm putting it in last, because I want you to realize you can run this boat for a while. You can run it forever as just a metal harvest without the fab. But if you want this to be a bullet maker, then I have left room for you to be able to tuck this fabricator in here. Now, I do encourage it to be the S+, plus because you'll then be able to just power it with gas and not have to have the generator with you. Crouch down. I'm going to just tuck this into the corner as close as I can get it. Alright, and then there's always a uh, ratio of when you're working the smelting process, 
you need more ash, you, pardon me, charcoal for the gunpowder. Plus, it's always good just to have a fire on your boat for you to cook your meals. So at this point, this is where I tuck in a little campfire. Now, if you have any questions on how many animals we can load here, let me just give you an example. We have what I affectionately like to call the Swiss Army Knife of Park, your standard Anki. You slip it in, and I like to make sure I walk off to the side, park them alongside, and then a couple of things here. If you are playing single player, or if you're just doing a solo run, I encourage you to grab a beaver. Because then you can just go ahead and harvest as much wood as you want and still fit it into the boat. I actually prefer beaver over mammoths for this reason. I don't have a second Anki right this moment, but if you were playing a co-op, if you had just one other partner with you, I would encourage you to bring a second Anki. And I would encourage you to bump their stats more. Encourage you to have one Anki dedicated to mining, and the other Anki with not much hit points as far as uh, melee points, but totally invested in weight and make him the truck. Then, as you can see, we've got plenty of room for another animal or two if you wanted. But this crew here is a good construction crew, as well as just the ability to go and harvest metal wherever you want. You check in the corner here soon, I'll put a video of a resource run that I recommend for Ragnarok. Let's show you how she sails. As you can tell, like I always try to do, is you have a pretty good view of everything. You're not obstructed, you're not trying to look through uh, gates just to get around. Alright, and as you can tell, she looks pretty good on the seas as well. Tough little ship, I almost wanted to name it the Defiant. It's a purpose built and looks pretty good as well. If you're looking to get a bullet farmer set up on your server, it's going to be hard to beat the bullet maker. I'm Commander Tom. I thank you for watching. If you like this video, click like and subscribe. If you want to see more, that's what Commander Crew Favorite is for. If you've already watched all of those, I've got uh, something special just for you. I'm Commander Tom, and I will see you next time.